Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're gonna to talk about Cytopoint, which is another injection uh, or an injection that can be used for allergies. And it works on a very similar pathway to Apoquil, which if you haven't heard about that, it's gonna be up here or there's gonna be a link in the description below. And so today we're gonna to contrast and compare Apoquil and Cytopoint and kind of discuss some of the advantages and disadvantages to each. First, we're gonna go through a video by Zoetis, which is the company that produces Cytopoint. And they're going to explain what it is. And I'm gonna just kind of intermittently stop in between and just tell you what they're actually talking about since this video was actually made for veterinarians. Some of you will understand it and some of you probably won't. So let's get started. Interleukin-31 is released upon antigen presentation to the lymphocyte. So a cytokine is a signaling molecule, and I kind of went through that in my last video. But what a lymphocyte is, is it's one of the white blood cells that processes antigen. And what an antigen is, is something that, it's something the, that the body perceives as an enemy. And so the lymphocyte is processing these, saying, yes, this is something we need to fight against, and so it'll release a signaling molecule like IL-31, or it'll say, nope, this is nothing, no big deal, and let's keep going on with our day. Interleukin-31 is a peritogenic cytokine that plays a key role in the itch-scratch cycle in atopic dogs. Interleukin-31 is released from T cells and binds to specific... T cells are a type of lymphocyte. So there's T cells, B cells, and there's actually a few others that are intermixed in there, but and there's a whole bunch of classifications of the types of different cells. Um, but basically, he's, they're talking about primarily B cells, T cells, etc. So that's what that is. And, cyto or, and IL-31 is a protein or a cytokine that's very, very important in itchy dogs. And that's what they're basically saying here. Receptors on neuronal cell surfaces, which causes the activation of intracellular enzymes. This is the JAX receptor, or JAX enzyme pathway. And so it's blocking the signaling molecule, as we'll see in a second, to this whole receptor pathway. This process triggers the generation of a nerve signal that travels to the brain and ultimately leads to the perception of itch, which results in pruritic behaviors. As part of normal response to disease, plasma cells produce antibodies to block the activity of different antigens. Using the same principles, antibodies can now be administered by injection and used therapeutically in dogs. Monoclo so essentially what antibodies are, are they're flags. Think, you can think of them like a flag, that you're marking a protein as, yes, the body has reacted to this in the past. So we're gonna react to it again, we're gonna put these things out, it's gonna bind it up and mark it for all of the inflammatory cells. And the body produces these naturally against different infections, and this is actually what makes vaccines work. And so what they're talking about here, where they're talking about monoclonal antibodies, is that they're producing a specific antibody and they're purifying it down until it's just a singular antibody against this very, very specific thing. And in this case, it's against IL-31, which is that itching cytokine, the cytokine that promotes itching. Clonal antibody therapy mimics the natural response to disease by providing highly selective antibodies that specifically target and neutralize only the molecules that are involved in the disease process. The K9 atopic dermatitis immunotherapeutic is an anti-interleukin-31 monoclonal antibody therapy that is designed with a high specificity profile for K9 cytokine interleukin-31. So basically it has a very high chance of binding to the thing that it's intended to bind to. So if it was a low specificity, as is in the case of some antibodies, not these, but in some antibodies in the body, they're low specificity, so they bind up a lot more than they originally were maybe designed to. But that also can broaden the scope of the antibody that you're giving. In this case, we don't want to bind up a lot of different proteins. We only, only want IL-31. Allowing veterinarians to target and neutralize a key mediator responsible for the development of pruritus in atopic disease without negative side effects. 
So always with our goal, so always one of our goals in veterinary medicine is actually to make sure that we're being as specific as we can so that we have fewer side effects. Generally, the more specific a drug is, meaning the more specific it is to what you're targeting, and it's not going to have as broad of a target range, the less side effects you're going to have. Not always, but in general. And in this case, this is one of the most specific drug therapies that we can give because we're targeting one specific protein and it doesn't seem to bind to other things. An antibody in and of itself is rel relatively harmless to the body because our body produces a bunch of it naturally. The anti-interleukin-31 monoclonal antibody therapy provides sustained relief and control of the itch and inflammation associated with atopic dermatitis, regardless of a dog's age, concomitant medications, or comorbidities. With monthly injections, veterinarians restore the quality of life to atopic dogs long-term and build a stronger ongoing relationship with their owners. So, that was their video about you know, what is going on and how this drug works. And now I wanted to just compare and contrast Apical and Cytopoint because I do use both of these in my patients very often and usually for slightly different purposes. Some of it has to do with finances because sometimes dogs don't respond as long on the Cytopoint and so Apical ends up being cheaper, but sometimes it's the other way around. And the biggest advantage I see to Cytopoint is that it's a single injection one injection and it'll last from four to eight weeks depending on the dog and that is an amazing time period for a single injection and it produces really good results i've had very few patients come back and say it didn't work there have been a few but not very many and often those that say it didn't work maybe had unrealistic expectations because it's not a miracle drug it's not going to perfectly cure everything but what it will do is it's gonna decrease the amount of itch that they feel and the amount of itch that's clinical. Now, the big changes or the big things that I would see between Cytopoint and Apoquil on my use case basis, one, they target a very similar pathway. So the Cytopoint targets IL-31 specifically and therefore present, preventing the whole JAX cascade, whereas Apoquil is actually gonna bind up the JAX receptor. And so it's going to block any of the cytokines from binding to JAX. And so there's a higher potential for side effects with Apoquil. And we see this with the likelihood of them getting demodicosis, which is a type of mange mite in young dogs if we give this too early. And it's also, we see this, and also it probably plays a role in why dogs that already have cancer that are given Apoquil may actually advance quicker than a dog that does not. So why would I, why would you pick Apoquil if you have Cytopoint? Well, one, I don't like Cytopoint as well in food trials. And the reason for that is you can't discontinue it right away. You have to wait for it to wane off and you never know for sure when it's gone. And so a food trial has to go on a lot longer. The other thing that is really helpful with Apoquil is it actually will decrease the amount of inflammation. So when used for things like an ear infection, Apoquil really will, it does amazing work on cleaning up the ears and stopping the itch, but also taking out the inflammation. And the side effects from Apoquil are a lot less than steroids most of the time. Because steroids, you're gonna get panting, you're going to get excessive drinking, urination, all of those things that are really frustrating as a pet owner to deal with and not comfortable for your pet either. But Apoquil does not get nearly those same amount of side effects. And so that's why I might pick Apoquil over Cytopoint. Now for dogs that are going to be on it long term, often I'll say, hey, let's try Apoquil, see how it works. If it works well, you know, let's try Cytopoint. Let's at least try it once we're, we have it under control and once we have that initial phase of treatment over that often we're treating some sort of bacterial or yeast infection as well. And once we treat it, let's start on the Cytopoint and let's just see how it goes, you know? And a lot of dogs do amazing on it. And, but then there's some dogs that really, it doesn't react, they react just fine to it and don't have any side effects, but it doesn't really work. And those are few and far between, but they do happen.
Thank you guys so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed this video about Cytopoint and comparing and contrasting Cytopoint and Apoquil and why your veterinarian may choose one or the other. The point of this video is not to tell you to use one of these because you have to get a prescription from your vet, but it's actually to inform you as, hey, these things are out here. Here's what's going on in the world. And here really is what they do, how they work, and why your vet might pick one or the other. And I hope you guys enjoy it. And if you like this type of content, make sure that you hit the like button and subscribe because we're gonna be doing a lot more of this kind of stuff here in the future. So have a good rest of your day and we'll see you next time.